Good afternoon, whenever you're reading this, good morning or good evening or good afternoon. Uh, today I'm going to have a look at some of the things that are said in Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh. Uh, that we'll start off with, uh, in the introduction, uh, uh, the, the second paragraph of the introduction in the book, it says, by Neil, he says this, this book was not written by me, it happened to me, and in your reading of it, it'll happen to you, for we are all led to the truth for which we are ready. Uh, you know, when Jesus was uh, being crucified, he was led uh, to uh, Pilate, and uh, he said to Pilate, uh, Every, everyone who seeks out the truth will find the truth. Uh, Pilate said, what is truth? And uh, Jesus had responded that. Uh, a funny thing about a statement that says we're all led to the truth for which we are ready is that uh, we can be led to anything. Uh, we can have our presupposed ideas that we want to uh, believe in uh, and uh, we can go and find the truth that supports that. We can go and find the verses in the Bible to support that. You can take one or two or five or twenty verses in the Bible and build a belief system around those verses out of context and you can back up anything you want to say. So, uh, first of all, he says that this book wasn't written by him. Uh, he goes on to say uh, later on in the book, uh, in chapter one, he says, To my surprise, as I scribbled out the last of my bitter, unanswerable questions and prepared to toss my pen aside, my hand remained poised over the paper as if held there by some invisible force. Abruptly the, men, the pen be, began moving on its own. I had no idea what I was about to write, but an idea seemed to be coming, so I decided to flow with it, out came. And then uh, the, the, the passage comes out that uh, God supposedly taught. Now, uh, in uh, in New Age doctrines and uh, other, other belief systems, uh, this sort of writing could be said to be automatic writing. Uh, so uh, I don't think any of the people who penned the Bible said that they did automatic writing. I think they uh, agreed that uh, God through the Holy Spirit spoke through them and they, they uh, basically uh, just wrote what they were inspired to write. However, uh, Neil says that uh, his pen uh, just automatically became writing for him. Uh, it's a bit scary. Um, he goes on to say, My life would probably be much easier if I'd kept all this quiet. He certainly wouldn't have published four or five books, certainly wouldn't have made millions of dollars. Uh, and uh, yes, I agree with him there that his life would most probably have been a lot easier if he hadn't have published this book. Uh, the reason I've uh, put this together and started to uh, talk on this book is uh, because I have a saviour called Jesus Christ and he uh, directed me to uh, put some video posts together and uh, highlight uh, certain parts of this book and go through them. So uh, we've established that uh, this book wasn't written by Neil. It was written by the unseen hand that guided him. And he likes to say that uh, the author of the book, the person speaking, was God himself. Of course, Neil would have had to write the questions uh, that were answered by God. Uh, but when God was writing, apparently his hand was moving uh, automatically. Um, so uh, what shall we take of this? Uh, we'll just go through it step by step and see what he's got to say. Uh, yet it wasn't a reason it happened to me, and whatever inconvenience this book may cause me, such as being called a blasphemer, a fraud, a hypocrite, for not having lived these truths in the past, or perhaps a holy man. Uh, if we go through them one by one, called a blasphemer, a blasphemer uh, is someone who says something against God, uh, I suppose. Uh, a lot of time if you use the Lord's name in vain, like Jesus Christ, you could be uh, called a blasphemer. Um, a fraud uh, someone who's uh, 
doing something that's uh, not right, that's illegal, it's like passing bad checks um, when you haven't got um, the money in your bank account, um, that's a fraudulent sort of activity. I wouldn't call what he's doing a fraud. Uh, I think Neil honestly believed that uh, God was talking to him. It's just a shame that uh, he doesn't seem to have had a very big biblical knowledge because a lot of the things in this book that God seems to have said uh, contradict what uh, verses in the Bible have to say. A hypocrite someone who, uh, who says one thing and does another. Uh, Jesus was particularly uh, annoyed with uh, the Pharisees in his days that uh, taught certain aspects of the law that were meant to be obeyed but when it came to obedience not even them were doing it so uh, God doesn't like hypocrites. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, Donald could be called a hypocrite because if he uh, lives by what is said in this book uh, at least he's been true to himself. Um, he says not having lived these truths in the past, well how could he have lived these truths in the past if he didn't know them? Uh, perhaps worse a holy man, uh, if he wants to put himself on that status uh, as a holy man, well that's up to him isn't it? I've decided to stick with what was my instincts are telling me rather than much of what the world will tell me about the material here. Now instincts can be a funny thing. Uh, you can uh, have a demon talking to you. Uh, of course, this uh, book discounts the fact that there's uh, a Satan and there's demons. Uh, uh, a lot of people in this world discount the fact that there's fallen angels. Uh, they like to believe there's true angels, but they don't believe that there's fallen angels. Uh, so, if there's no such thing as a fallen angel, well, then a fallen angel couldn't be dictating this book to Neil, could he? Uh, so, if you discount fallen angels and you might discount uh, someone who could deceive and, and write something that's intelligently put together but uh, not abiding or not aligning itself with the truth of the Bible. So uh, uh, this is uh, a little bit of his introduction. He says that uh, he goes with his own instincts. Uh, well you could uh, grow up in a house where your father was constantly beating you up and constantly beating your mother up and it was a house full of violence. You could grow up uh, to become a teenager and uh, grow up older than a teenager, become a married man and go on and beat up your wife and go on and beat up your children. Uh, that would be instinct uh, to you, be a learned behaviour, be part of your instincts. So uh, instincts uh, always what's the best, you know. Neil said he'll go with what his instincts are telling him. Uh, that can't always be trusted. Uh, depending on the background, the behaviour of a person, and that depends on the instincts that uh, they'd be reacting with. Uh, uh, you could be instinctively honest, or you could be instinctively dishonest, depending on your background, the behaviour, and what you grew up with. So uh, we'll just leave it at there. Uh, I would just go on. Those instincts say the book is not nonsense. The, uh, the outworking of a frustrated spiritual imagination or simply the self-justification of a man seeking vindication from a life misled. So he's saying he, he, uh, that this book is not nonsense. This isn't the frustrate, frustrated overworking of a spiritual imagination or a self-justification of a man seeking vindication from a life misled. So, uh, if we're to believe uh, Neil, what he's saying is this book isn't nonsense. It isn't uh, his own uh, imagination going a bit crazy and making up his own stuff, which basically says the psychiatrists are wrong here. Uh, this isn't, uh, you know, uh, uh, an hallucination. And it's in no way did he write this as a soft justification for his own life. So there's a little bit of our introduction, we'll call this introduction part one, and uh, we'll go on from here.